Hi, I'm Gideon King, owner of Novamind, and today I'd like to talk to you about knowledge management. Actually, more than just knowledge management, we'll examine how knowledge is created, what it is, and how you can use it. In these days of information overload, the compact way of representing ideas that's embodied in mind mapping is essential. You can summarize a huge amount of information in a very compact space. We are fed with a huge amount of data all the time, and we are pretty good at sorting through the incoming data and applying our understanding of the relationships between the different pieces of data and its meaning to us so that we can turn the data into information. In this process, we delete, distort, and filter the data to fit our understanding of the world. The raw data is turned into something that's summarized, described, and defined in terms that fit with the information we already know. This massively reduces the amount of material we need to deal with, and also helps us process new data as it comes along. But still we are overwhelmed with the amount of information we have. We need to turn the information into knowledge, so we generalize the information and look for overall patterns that fit with our current knowledge. Knowledge allows us to have the concept of how things work, so that we can develop strategies and methods that we know from experience will work. We'll also be able to more easily process information because we know the patterns that we expect the information to fall into and are able to recognize those patterns with new information. Now if we purely operate from the level of knowledge, we're able to implement strategies that are effective at dealing with issues, but we won't be very good at creativity or invention of new solutions. So beyond knowledge, there is what we can call wisdom or understanding. In order to go from knowledge to wisdom, we need to understand the principles behind the patterns that we see, and the reasons that the strategies work. We recognize meta-patterns in the knowledge, patterns that define the patterns that we observe. Once we recognize those reasons, it builds a framework of truth around our perception of reality, so we're able to form hypotheses as to what the principles are, test them, and form principles and archetypes that we can use to drive creativity, invention, and coming up with new paradigms which either fit with the truth of our reality or challenge it in new ways. Having this framework of wisdom in place helps with good decision making, efficient processing of options, and creative thinking that stems from solid principles. We thrive on being at the edge between overload on one side and boredom on the other side. If we have inefficient ways of dealing with data and turning it into information, then we'll have data overload problems. And if we have inefficient ways of turning the information into knowledge, then we'll have information overload problems. If we get overloaded by either data or information, we are likely to either withdraw from the information flow or adopt a whatever or I don't care approach or do some sort of more mundane task or work or perhaps blob out in front of the TV or distract ourselves from the actual task we should be doing. In one way or another, we either cut down on our input or our processing of it to avoid the feeling of overwhelm. On the other end of the scale, if we're not stimulated with enough data or the data we are receiving already fits with everything that we already know in every way, we get totally bored and sometimes we do things that actually sabotage situations or relationships because subconsciously we've become bored. As you can see, our typical reactions to overload are unhelpful because we get into stuck states and give up completely, and our reactions to boredom are often unhelpful because we sabotage things just to make life interesting. While it is possible to go through life with very few tools and strategies to be able to cope with overload or boredom, if you live your life like that, you're going to be very unfulfilled and accomplish very little. On the other hand, when you use the right tools and techniques to be able to deal with increasing amounts of data, information and knowledge, you will enter a flow state where you're able to achieve massive amounts in a short space of time and be able to be creative and a visionary. It will both make for massive personal growth and productivity, but will also allow you to feel in control of the situation going with the information flow. If you feel bored and develop the skills to be aware of that situation before you artificially introduce drama, then you'll go and seek out more stimulation, more data, more challenges to tackle, and you'll get the immense satisfaction of dealing with the hard problems and conquering them. When you're dealing with a lot of data and information at once, it's like a pipe. 
and if that pipe gets blocked, then all the information and data piles up behind it and very soon you have an information overload situation and everything shuts down and you start using your tactics to get rid of the incoming information or ignore it and the whole flow process stops. You stop learning, you stop gathering knowledge, you stop creating wisdom and you stop being creative. One of the most common causes of this happening is when you get stuck making a decision, which is why I made the video on decision making so you never need to have that blockage again. But the more subtle issue is if you have more data than you can handle going into the pipe and the pressure gradually builds up and builds up and you don't know how to handle it until eventually it absolutely explodes. Now, if the knowledge is inaccessible or difficult to understand, then it's useless to you or whoever could benefit from it. When the knowledge is readily accessible though and is actually used in the decision making and problem solving processes and creative greenfield thinking, then you have the sum of knowledge and experience of everyone in every situation that contributed to that knowledge at your disposal to allow you to make the most of every situation. And of course this is where mind mapping comes into play. As you gather the data, you can put it into a mind map, and as you do so, you are naturally deleting, distorting and filtering the data to become information and to match with the knowledge and information that you already have. This helps you deal with data and information overload. As you arrange the mind map, you're starting to group the information so that the linkages between the ideas convey meaning and the organization is exactly the same as when information is organized in your brain. At this stage, you're still operating mostly from a left brain logical perspective, but at the same time, you're naturally creating an image that's attractive to your right brain too. As you graph the branches and use the colors and branch shapes and images to indicate the commonality of ideas, you're building the understanding of the patterns within the information and generalizing back to the root branches. This allows you to gain the level of overview of information that is necessary for it to be knowledge where you understand how it all fits together and how your objectives are going to be met. So you're automatically turning the data into information and the information into knowledge as you create and refine your mind maps. This knowledge consists not only of the keywords on the branches, but also the colors, positioning and connections the branches have, as well as the images, boundaries, task information, priorities, branch notes, and all your hyperlinks to other documents, web pages and resources. They all go to make up the sum of the knowledge contained in the mind map. The compactness and richness of this visual representation of the knowledge makes mind maps excellent knowledge management tools so that when you or somebody else need the information, it's right there in an easily understood format and with all the richness of the information and data behind it. Having the knowledge represented graphically in this way is a great help in going the next step to wisdom and understanding where you get the picture of the principles and the underlying patterns in the knowledge and can therefore propose archetypes and principles that can drive forward through a brainstorming process to new and innovative solutions. Using mind maps in this way ensures that you can manage the volume of data, process it efficiently into information and package it up into knowledge without getting overloaded. This means that you can move through wisdom to true creativity based on a solid foundation of understanding. To my knowledge there is no other tool better suited to this process of creating and maintaining close to optimal performance than mind mapping.